What's up, guys? It's your boys, Awoki, back out with some more of the Chris Watts, Nicole Kessinger video. Today is strictly on the eyes of Nicole Kessinger and the untold story of said her. Now, we're going to be reading the the actual true crime story of her by OMG So GD. I'm guessing OMG So Good. Um, this is the person that wrote the article, but I thought we would give this a read and pretty much looking to see if there's anything else that's different that we don't know or um, knew that we might not know already. Before we go any further, if you guys could do me a solid favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting that wiper icon down the bottom right, hit that bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that's Wookie myself has posted that video. And then you guys can watch, comment, like, and share. And again, thank you guys so very much for the continued love and support that you guys show on this channel every single day. I can't thank you guys enough. With that being said, I would love to get into this untold story of Nicole Kessinger to find out more because this woman is pretty much what is keeping this case alive um, is because of her. I'm not going to lie. It is because of her. If it wasn't for her or if she was um, arrested and actually serving time for her involvement, I guarantee we would not have all these YouTube channels doing what they do. So with that being said, let's get into the read. Alrighty. So starting off, imagine a life lived in the shadows where everybody is whispering of your name ignites a wildfire of speculation. We pretty much do that now. Um, in the age of the digital lynch mob, where the court of public opinion rules supreme, one must wonder what happened to those who disappeared into the folds of infamy. Man, this person knows how to write really good. Uh, Nicole Kessinger's name might not ring a bell immediately, but her untold story tangles with the dark deeds of Christopher Watts, haunts the black alleys of our collective consciousness. Is she a ghost fl flitting through small towns under an assumed identity, or has she revented herself like a phoenix rising from the ashes of scandal? In a world where privacy is a relic of the past, could she truly vanish, or is she just a step ahead, always looking over her shoulder? The notion of sighting Chris or uh, Nicole Kessinger is an elusive as finding a needle in a haystack, sparking curiosity and feeling rumors. Now, this person is literally taking with what all we have said so far, just writing it better than us because this person is definitely very good. Um, the tale is not just about one woman's escape from notoriety. It's a minor reflection um, or reflecting our society's hunger for scandal, redemption, and the unknown. Each supposed sighting, um, each unverified account forces us to question, are we seeking closure for her or for ourselves? Welcome to the Enigma of Nicole Kessinger, where reality blurs with the finesse or fantastical and every rumor carries a kernel of truth. Now, the background um, overview is what they're wanting to look at, the history, the brief history of Nicole Kessinger and her involvement in the infamous case. Public factuation. Why does this case continuously burn in everybody's mind that looks into this case? Why Nicole remains a figure of intrigue and the reason behind the continuous interest. The continuate or continuate or concurrent speculations. Discussing the rumors and sightings of Nicole Kessinger. Now, I don't care where she is. I don't care who she's with. All I care about is her actually being questioned and argumentatively um, asked the right questions because they were not done. Morally and curiosity and, and, or and that analyzing, again, I'm bad with pronunciation, back off, our, our society obsession with figures like Nicole herself. Call to action, encouraging readers to explore more stories on unsolved murders and mysteries. Now, she or this person has more um, spots and, and so forth like that. So if you guys want to take a look at it, the link is down in the description. They have quite more here. Okay, so hello there. Welcome to OMG So Good, where we dive into juicy stories with a dash of wit and sprinkle of sarcasm. 
I love it. I love it a lot. Today we are dis dissecting the Netflix documentary, American Murder, The Family Next Door, which I don't feel that they did very much justice for um, looking into Nicole. They talked about her very briefly and then they moved on. So I definitely do not encourage, uh, well, I wouldn't say I don't encourage you to watch it, but you can go ahead and watch it, but just don't, um, be excited for any juicy information when it comes to Nicole, because there's literally very little to none. Um, which uh, covers the horrific murders of Shanann Watts and her daughters, Bella and Celeste, which again, the focus is on them, the victims that were taken away. Um, so horrifically. Um, but I definitely do think that there needs to be like a documentary on just Nicole that like a big wig company should be doing. So, um, the documentary was well received, but it did leave out us or leave out quite a bit of information that left us scratching our heads. Where was Nicole Kessinger? Chris Watts's mistress. Let's explore the missing puzzle pieces or hopeful puzzle pieces because I don't think we're going to find everything. Now, first off, who is Nicole Kessinger? For those that don't know, she is um, a geologist or was. I don't know if necessarily she still is. She graduated from Colorado State University with a Bachelor's of Science in 2013. She has also an Associate's of Science degree focusing on geology and earth sciences from the Community College of Aurora. According to her now deleted LinkedIn profile, she literally deleted everything. Like um, when the whole case was starting on, uh, to hit the headlines and so forth, Nicole went into complete darkness. She still lingers in complete darkness, but I guarantee that she lures in the, the, the darkness and the shadows of the internet, just listening and watching um, without reciprocating um, any information because she doesn't want the spotlight on her. She wants to be a ghost, as you will. Um, she has been on a Colorado or Colorado's girl most of her life, living in Fort Collins, Littleton, Denver, and Aurora. Evansville, Wyoming seems to be the only place outside of Colorado where she resided in. When Nikki met Chris at Anadarko Petroleum, sparks flew. Or butt stuff flu. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, Chris said Nikki put him on a leash. I thought he was able to spread his wings and 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 do whatever he wanted to do. He didn't feel controlled. Little did he know he still had a leash on. As soon as their eyes met, romantic, right? Gross. Uh, throw up well maybe a bit more foreshadowing than we'd like he sent her cards full of song lyrics and pledges of undying love my sweet empanada today chris has found religion in prison normally people that are have gone to prison either have found gym i mean i mean weightlifting they have found I wouldn't say necessarily food, but enjoyment and something that they have tried to find, writing letters, eating food, making different prison foods. Um, they find pen, or pen pals or whatever have you, or they found um, some type of friendship slash um, gang me member affiliation in prison and religion. So, of course, he found religion. He should have found religion before he even started um, this whole issue. and. Um, annihilation of his family. In letters to author Sherilyn Cadle, he described Nikki using a Bible verse from Proverbs, calling her an evil woman, charming, and aka naming her Jezebel. Now, I'm reading this, but I'm also adding my addition of words as so forth. So it's not completely the writings of this person but a majority of it is as well. So again, links in the description. If you guys don't want to listen to me ramble on and you want to just read it, links are in the description for you guys to click it. So, oh, where we go? Okay, the Chris Watts confession. Obviously, people are thinking that love Chris Watts, thinking that he's going to be able to get out because he was coerced into his confession. He wasn't. He literally spouted it off to his father and then the other people came in afterwards and... 
he told them everything. So I don't know how that's coerced into his confession. Before diving into the glory or gory details, let's rewind to August 14th, 2018, just one day after Chris murdered his family, gave give, or Chris gave a bizarre interview to local news. I just want them back. I want them wherever they are at. Like I have no incline or inclination to where they're at right now. It just earth shattering. I don't feel like this is even real right now. He said his house he claimed was a ghost town. Little did they, the world know the truth hidden behind this crocodile's tear. I would say more monstrous tear, but you know what? Uh, uh, their meeting. So the horrific details, according to police reports and Chris's letters, here's what really happened on August 13th. I still don't think we actually know a hundred percent the, the real or the reality of his actions. He just keeps spouting off stories to change it, to keep it up, uh, updated, um, to keep the case alive. But again, the case is alive because of Nicole Kessinger. So I digress. Chris smothered his daughters, Bella and Celeste, in their beds with their pillows, is what he has re said. He he technically apparently murdered them twice. Um, he then strangled Shanann to death in their room. He wrapped Shanann in a sheet, and as he dragged her body downstairs, his daughters woke up and asked, What's wrong with mommy? Chris told them Shanann wasn't feeling well and loaded her body into his truck, which I still don't believe wholeheartedly. But again, that's just my opinion, my theory. Um, it's not factual, so I want to make that very clear. Uh, the three then drove to the oil site where Chris, Chris planned to work that day. Um, a lot of b people do believe that the the girls were murdered before they left, but then we did look at the un or the um, uncut raw version of the neighbor's camera that morning, which I can link down in the description for you guys to check that out. Um, we did see little shadows. Um, I don't know if it was more than one. I did see the one, and that was uncut, undoctored, and so forth like that. So, um, just to put that out there. He put garbage bags over Shanann's head and feet and placed her on the floorboard in the back seat. Now, looking at it, I've said it multiple times, there's no way for a 15-week pregnant woman to be to fit in there. Even if the chair things were lifted up or put her down, I don't think there was any way for her to be stuffed in that area. If she wasn't pregnant, let alone being pregnant, you can't tell me otherwise. Um, Bella and Celeste were in the back right next to their mommy's body, apparently sitting above her, which I highly doubt. The more talkative um, and aware of the two was next. Um, oh, wait, no. When they arrived, Chris first smothered Cece with her blue blanket, which he later threw away. Bella, the more talkative and aware of the two, was next. The one, apparently, that actually fought. Um, again, I don't believe that Shanann would have just sat there and took her demise. I think she was um, blindsided. She was secretly, or not secretly, but um, how do I want to say it? She was, she didn't see it coming. And uh, it was a shock and she didn't have time to react. So I, because there's no way that woman would have not fought with her being so boisterous and um, go-getter kind of woman that she was. Um, <coughs> Chris confessed to the FBI that Bella's last word were daddy no. I hope that those two phrases, those two words haunt him for the rest of his life. Haunting, isn't it? As he per writes, Nicole Kessinger's role. Now, let's circle back to Nicole. According to Chris, after the murders, he felt free to be with Nikki. So that kind of puts the whole, oh, I was going to self-delete myself with a gas can um, that he had said once back in February when they interviewed him in Wisconsin. He felt no remorse, describing an overwhelming darkness inside him immediately after the murders. Chris searched for a four-star 
top secret Aspen hotel to take Nikki to unenrolled or to, to take Nicole to. He unenrolled his daughters from school, contacted a realtor to sell the house and look up lyrics to Metallica's song battery. Nikki, on the other hand, went to police with her daddy. Um, I put daddy in there, but only after deleting all of her texts from Chris's or from Chris's and her um, discussion or dialect and so forth and asking a friend to do the same. Why would you have to sit there and delete or tell your friend to delete everything from her phone? She even Googled how much Amber Fry made from her book deal. Classy, right? Like, but yet she was okay to be let go. The missing piece. Why wasn't Nikki a bigger part of the Netflix documentary? Before we go any further, I think it's because they wanted to focus on the grotesque annihilation that Chris did with um, the victims, which is Shan, Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. They wanted to focus on them as the primary victims, which I do wholeheartedly believe in. But I think that they should have looked at Nicole Kessinger after the fact. But again, they wanted to focus on the victims. Um, that's the million dollar question. According to the district attorney's office, Chris Watts's guilty plea precluded any need to probe further into Nicole's involvement. That right there. Convenient, right? Yet some disappearing or discrepancies remain. For instance, discovery documents show Nikki searched for both Chris and Shanann on Google as early as August 2017. So like we've said millions of times on my channel and hundreds of other channels that she researched them a, a year before the actual murders took place. Months before they allegedly met. A typo, perhaps, or a deeper, darker connection, which the DA did let us know that the typo was not a typo. It was, in fact, that she did Google them. So yet, we let them go because of Chris's um, plea, or guilty plea. My take on this case, my take on the case, so we're look, that's why I like look, reading these uh, also articles, because I like to see what other people speak about. We obviously know what I think about with this case. We know what you guys think about, or majority of you guys that are subscribed and commenting and so forth. But let me step in here with my perspective. The omission of Nicole Kessinger from the documentary leaves a significant gap in understanding the full story. Whether she had a direct role or was a, just a bystander caught in a whirlwind, her presence is undeniable. It is f fascinating yet disturbing to see how somebody can become so entangled in such a traumatic narrative. Chris's actions and his relationship with Nikki add layers of complexity to an already horrific tale. I wholeheartedly believe that. To understand true motives and events, it is essential to consider all pieces of the puzzle, including Nikki's influence. The fact that she was searching for information on Shanann and Chris months before their affair allegedly began raising questions about her involvement and intentions. When she just another was she just another pawn in Chris's twisted game, or did she play a more active role? The truth might be unsettling than we can imagine. I feel like she was not a pawn; she was the queen. Chris was the king, and when I say the king and queen, I mean the pawn pieces or the the chess pieces. Not that he was a king or she was a queen; she was just the one calling the shots. You know how the queen on a chessboard is the one that can literally take out everything and destroy almost everything where the king can only move one or two spaces, but the queen can literally move everywhere. Yeah, I, I think that. Um, where is Nicole Kessinger now? Again, I don't care where she's at, but that I know of from my sources, which is very, very sourceful. She's still in Colorado. She didn't leave. 
Nicole Kessinger's whereabouts remain uncertain. She lives, she works from home um, with a various reports suggesting different possibilities after her involvement with Chris Watts and ensuing or suing ensuing media attention. She faced significant public backlash, losing her job, deactivating her social medias. Some sources speculate that she even had entered a witness protection program due to the threats and intense scrutiny she had faced. So she went into witness protection program her own self and her dad has helped her. So she didn't get help from like the government, the CBI or FBI. She did it on her own. Kessinger has now publicly or has not been publicly heard from since 2018's interview with Denver post. And there has been no concrete evidence of her current location or situation. Now I know, but again, for protection and security of the person and individual that has let me know this, I can't diverge that information because one, I don't want to know where she's at regardless. I just want the police to find her and sub, uh, substantially question her in her regarding this case. Um, that's again, why I haven't showed it. I've seen pictures, signatures. Like, I don't care wh- where this woman works. I just want her questioned properly. Um, The idea that she's been living under a new identity in a different town remains a plausible theory. Nikki, Nicole, Lee, Miller, Kessinger, um, whatever have you. um, She just changed it so she can publicly be not included in this case. Final thoughts. In conclusion, while the Netflix documentary does a compatible job, or a commendable job, sorry, of laying out the basic facts of the Watts family murders, it falls short on providing a complete picture of Nicole Kessinger's abstinence in glaring and her role in the events leading up to and following the murders uh, deserves closer scrutiny. As true crime enthusiasts and empathetic humans like myself and like this person, we owe it to the victims to seek the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. I, oh, I agree with that. We're left to ponder the delicate dance between infamy and autonomy or anatomy. Is she the specter of her past foreshadowing Um, or forever shadowing by the whispers and pointed fingers, or has she mastered the art of reinvention or reinventing herself in a world eager to forget? We're not going to forget. I can tell you that right now. This is not going to be forgotten. Um, Her story isn't just a footnote in the, the, annals of true crime. It is a testament to our fascination with elusive and extraordinary extraordinary, um, events in chasing these fleets or fleeting glimpses of Nicole. We confront our own thirst of for narrative closure and the complex web of morality, empathy, and curiosity that binds us all. Are we, Seeking justice, redemption, or merely the thrill of the hunt. Now, I don't care about the thrill of the hunt. I care of the seeking justice. Um, The answer lies somewhere in the shadows that she inhabits forever just out of reach. Curiosity to unravel more tales of intrigue and mystery. Dive into our extensive collection of articles that dive or delve into the lives of those who lived on the edge of the spotlight where every turn holds a new twist. Check out the unsolved mystery category. And so you guys with that link in the description, I can definitely go into that more. (coughs) Now there is stuff more about Nicole Kessinger that, We have obviously not looked into. We've seen her past where she had stabbed somebody in the back. Um, She has been caught with DUIs, which were later just thrown out. Um, We've looked into the fact that yesterday, again, links are in the description for that video. 
I wholeheartedly believe that looking into the, the security system that was in place at the Watts home now has just exploded this to show us that there was somebody else there opening the bedroom door while Chris was engaged in putting things out into the truck. The garage door was open. The way that she was able to enter the home that we listened to yesterday, that Chris said that all you had to do was lift up the this whatever have you for the window and you were able to get... With looking at the sensors of the home with the Vivint security system, there was no sensors in the basement. There was a sensor on the 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 stairway um there was a sensor in the living room that could tell when the door to the basement was open or shut um there were sensors on the sliding glass door there were sliding or sensors on the garage door and when i say garage door there's two of them there's one that was on the actual garage door that you opened up from the the mud room or the mud area to go out to the garage and there was a sensor on the actual door garage door that opened up for the 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 cars themselves and the door that was left open was the door to go into the garage um for human or people to use not the actual garage door i was kind of lost in that when i um, looked into it a little bit further the garage door that opened up um into the mud room that was open but then later shut and then reopened because at 1247 when Nicole Atkinson had left to go to the doctor's appointment to see if actually Shanann had arrived. Nicole Atkinson was there with her son, but the doors to the basement and the garage door were opening and shutting. How is that possible when Chris was at work still? Nicole Kessinger, I wholeheartedly, for educational and um, entertainment purposes, she had to have been involved. She was there some shape or form. Again, I can't say physically murdering the girls. Um, I don't want to give an excuse for Chris because he, he was the main um, person that did everything, but Nicole Kessinger was involved in some shape or form. And yet hoping again, people say, Oh, you're just making these videos over and over and over. Well, maybe one time, they might actually sink into the head of the right person, not the DA that's at that location right now, um, which might get uh, re-voted in by default because I don't think there's anybody that's um, going against him in um, the elections this year, which is unfortunate. But I do believe this is the last year that he can actually be in this job um, section. So it's going to take to the point where a private investigator, somebody rogue takes this on upon themselves to actually look into because until the DA has been changed or reevaluated, I don't think anything is going to happen. Like I said before, I think it's going to take not months, but years for this to actually be opened up. But again, looking at all this stuff, including like we looked at yesterday, the Chris Watts and the Vivint security system, that blew a whole nother opening to this case, showing that 100% certainty that somebody was there. While Chris was gone, somebody was moving in that house. It wasn't the kids. I'm pretty sure Dieter didn't have plausible thumbs for him to walk around, move things, and, and so forth like that. So I wholeheartedly believe that, again, Nicole Kessinger was there that morning. She helped out in some shape or form. We just now got to get her actually physically there. We know that somebody was there by the security system. We just now have to place Nicole Kessinger there, which we kind of can because her phone pinged there that morning. Betty had seen a silver smaller truck parked where Chris's truck normally is parked. I mean, what more do we have to flash and show the, the authorities that she was there? She needs to be looked at. She needs to be talked to. Hook her up to a lie detector. Again, I mean, we they, they hooked up Chris. I think they even hooked up, I think, somebody else. I can't remember. I want to say that they hooked up one of... 
his worker. I think it was, I can't remember offhand. Somebody mentioned to me, I don't know if it's um, 100% certainty, but it's like right in front of their face and they're like, I don't see it. What are you talking about? Like, it's right here. What? Like, it just, it shocks me. So with that being said, with the information that we have in front of us um, and the untold story from a different perspective, um, let me know your thoughts. There's people that are just finding out about this case nowadays. They're learning about it. Um, they heard about it before. They want to look back into it. It's it's the crime. Crime definitely is something that is um, very highly watched, um, very looked into. There's been YouTubers that before that have cracked cases open. I don't, and I've said this before, I don't want publicity for finding out truth. I just want justice to prevail and I can see it and it's right there, but nothing's being done. So people are like, well, Zawoki's just in it for the money or the credit or that. I don't want none of that. I just want her to be questioned appropriately and actually be found out if she's innocent or guilty. And I say innocent because there's always that 1% chance, but the 99% of me says that she was involved. So again, the comments are open for you guys to uh, talk, discuss, be proper, be positive, no bullying. Um, hit the like button for the obvious reasons that hopefully all this will make sense. Hopefully one day, and we'll see you guys in the next video. So please take care, be safe, and as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys in the next video.